Ada Lovelace Day started in 2009 as a reaction to an extended period of going to tech conferences and seeing very few or no women at all on stage. And after being, feeling quite angry about this for some considerable time, I stumbled on the work of a psychologist called Penelope Lockwood, who had found that women need female role models more than men need male role models. And whilst the issues that women in STEM face are complicated, role models seemed like something relatively simple that we could actually do something about. And so the first Ada Lovelace Day was a day of blogging about women in technology. I felt that if we told women stories, that we would be able to create new role models. We would be able to raise the profile of women in tech. And, and we would start to erode this invisibility that a lot of women face. So obviously that first year, one of the most popular women that people wrote about was Mary Curie. Um, and I kind of went with the flow and decided that tech was too narrow and that we needed to broaden it out into STEM. Every year, um, people engage with Ada Lovelace Day around the world. We have uh, events like this going on at the moment on six continents this year. Um, last year, we actually managed to get seven continents. We managed to get Antarctica, which was <laughs> exciting. Um, and, and last year was Ada's bicentenary, so we had a huge amount of engagement and a lot more people now know who Ada Lovelace is. I've been incredibly lucky to get the support of organizations like Digital Science um, and also a lot of our sponsors so that I can expand the work of Ada Lovelace Day from one day a year to a year-round uh, set of work. And, and what we did with the Catalyst grant was to put together a database of resources for women in STEM, covering things like the latest research, uh, grants and fellowships, organizations that support women in STEM, and educational resources for teachers. Um, we are constantly adding to that database, but I would encourage you to go to our website at findingada.com and take a look at it, and let us know about resources you want us to add. We've also published two anthologies of biographies of women in STEM, we have a teacher's pack for um, children aged sort of 11 to 14, which explores some of the issues that, um, that are around gender and STEM. Uh, we have a lot of free downloadable posters about Ada Lovelace herself and also careers posters. Uh, we have a podcast now as well, and actually uh, one of my, or a couple of my podcast interviewees are sitting in the front row, so um, that's always a, a, a great... Uh, it's a fun thing for me to do, to talk to women in STEM about their work and get under the hood of what it actually is to be in STEM, and also to talk to men and women about the women that they admire. And I'm really pleased to see you know, a good gender mix here because I want men involved in this conversation. Because the challenges faced by women in STEM don't just affect women, they affect all of us. And we all need to step up to the plate and play our role in challenging the systemic uh, problems that, uh, that still exist and, and the systemic barriers that we need to dismantle. So I'm really, really pleased to be here and to see so many people here. I'm really looking forward to the talks this evening. Um, I'd like to thank you all for your support of Ada Lovelace Day. And also mention that we do have a special discount just for you for Ada Lovelace Day Live, which is on Tuesday, Tuesday evening from 6.30 at the IET um, in Savoy Place. Uh, we have the, if you use the hashtag, uh, which is not on screen, but Wisdom Spotlight, um, that is a 20% discount on tickets. So um, please do come along on Tuesday. We'd love to see you. Um, so thank you very much. I hope that it, that's slightly more than a few words. Uh, so I'd like to now introduce Gemma. Thank you.